all can start attacking the system and say how crooked Wall Street is and how uh, some specialist on the floor just pimped them of all their money and they're not doing so hot and how the game is rigged and all this other stuff. So that's what the, the loser does. He, he makes excuses for his underperformance. Now, you heard me mention that Wall Street is an even playing field. It's an even playing field because you don't have to have a college degree to learn how to trade the market. You don't need to have a PhD or a master's or a bachelor's degree. As a matter of fact, guess who the biggest losers are on Wall Street? Those with the highest IQ. Yeah, that's, that's a fact, okay? The ones with the highest IQ usually are the ones who do not make a dime in the market. They lose all their money because they overthink everything and they are the smartest man in the room. They suffer from that disease, the smartest man in the room disease. Since knowledge and information absorption comes easy to them, they believe that they know everything and they are in need of learning nothing. So they lose everything. Okay, So the smartest guy in the room is usually the one who is the loser on Wall Street. Now, the, the truth of the matter is that some of the biggest names, some of the brightest and biggest and best traders that ever walked the planet, and there have been quite a few, most of these guys, some of them didn't even have a high school diploma. Some of them have very limited education, you know, fifth grade education, third grade ed education. Wanna know why? Because it's not a requirement, okay? The, some of the biggest losers on Wall Street are doctors and lawyers and engineers and physicists and mathematicians. Oh yeah, surgeons. Yeah, that's right, rocket scientists. It's biggest losers ever on Wall Street. I can, I can write a book about my early days when I started off as a, as, as a broker and, and specializing in derivatives. I had all types of walks of life of clients and I'm here to tell you, buddy, the smartest dudes were the dumbest dudes when it came to trading. See, it's not based on your intellectual prowess. Trading has nothing to do with your mind on that level. All right? It's a whole different ball game. All right? And it doesn't matter if you have a perfect trading system. I can give you a perfect trading system and you still will not be able to make money from it because the majority of the perspiration and trading doesn't come from the perfect system it comes from the individual it comes from your personality and your mentality all right you have to have a certain makeup to be a successful trader that's the the truth that's the bottom line and no matter how long you study no matter what you do it does not guarantee you success in the markets uh, let me repeat that it does not matter how intelligent you are or you think you are and how many years you put into this it does not guarantee you success in the market 95 percent of all traders and investors lose 100 percent of the time so let me break it down for you the business side of wall street and these are facts not factoids facts the average time it takes for a new account, and I'm speaking from a brokerage firm mentality because I was a principal at a brokerage firm, a very successful, large brokerage firm. Yes, I was a principal. And we had our business models. We knew how long a new account would stay in existence. When I say a new account, I mean a self-directed account, not a, not a managed account, not a broker-assisted account, a self-directed account. Do you know what the life cycle is of a new self-directed account? Two months, regardless of the amount of equity in the account. I don't care if you open with $200,000 or $2 million or $20. Two months, you're gone, you're out of here. You're broke, you're busted. That's a fact. Okay, it's just how it is. That's the business of Wall Street. Now, believe it or not, how many know by the show of hands what the average size of a retail account is for trading commodity futures and derivatives? Anybody? Wrong answer. The average account size is $1,500. 
and I think that actually went up like in mid 2000s to like maybe two thousand dollars hence that's why you see on most of the uh, online trading commercials that you would see I'm not going to mention any names of any firms but they had an account minimum of two thousand dollars to open mm -hmm. yeah some even to this day have five hundred dollars as the minimum to open an account that's the average account size believe it or not now, of course you got people out there putting in millions of dollars because they have it but the fact of the matter is it's a it, it's, it's the little guy the retail guy is a little guy now on the institutional side that's a little bit different you know how the exchanges make their money and the and the brokerage firms make their money off the institutional clients they make it up in volume so they charge them a, a smaller commission because they're going to do more volume so that's how they make their money okay whether you win or lose you pay a commission everybody gets a piece you know the SEC wants some money the NFA wants money the CFTC wants money the SEC wants money the exchanges want money everyone's getting money they're charging money for data they're charging all these different fees and they're gonna get their fees you better believe that that's why most commissions back in the day did not include fees okay they do now so anyway that's a, a, a inside look on the business side of things all right now I titled this quant or quack because people are under the impression that quantitative analysis and algorithms control the market and that that is the quote-unquote smart money well you can't say two things out of the same mouth at the same side of your mouth you can't have salt water and fresh water running out of the same stream now if you say that the smart money is out of the market but yet the algorithms are take, have taken over the market and the algorithms are the smart money then the smart money hasn't left the market duh right if you say that most retail investors have left the building and they're not trading anymore, then that means that it's just algorithms doing battling and, and going to war every day, right? Okay, well then let me hit you with this, and then we'll end this first part of the video. If there's no one left in the building except for the smart money, which is the algorithms, which is the computers, then whose money am I taking every day? Think about that. But wait, hold on. I thought the algorithms were the smart money and they couldn't be beaten. <gasps> oh no. Well then, whose money am I taking, man? Dude, I made like two, three hundred pips yesterday in the Forex market. You saw the you saw you saw the, the video, you saw the in play printout. Come on. How many dollars did I take out of the, the out of the market yesterday? You tell me. Go back and, and look at it. Go, print out the spreadsheet and you, and you pull up a, a chart and look at the, the high, low, and closes of yesterday. And you look at my entry points and my stop loss. And you tell me how much money you would have made had you gotten out of the high or the low of the day or if you gotten out of the close. How much money would you be up? And then you get back. And then you holler back at me. You tell me whose money did I take yesterday because I, I would like to know. I like to know whose money I took. It's good to know whose money you took. So if the smart money is not left the building but is in the building and it's an algorithm and it's a computer and you can't beat the computer then who am i beating all right that's part one part two coming up peace out